I'm going to show you how to avoid the top three mistakes people make when hiring a personal trainer for strength training. Here's what you can expect to learn in this video. First, we're going to cover the obvious benefits of strength training. Then we're going to cover the most common reasons that people hire a personal trainer, followed by the top six mistakes that personal trainers make with strength training. And lastly, what exactly you came for is the top three mistakes that consumers make when choosing a personal trainer. If you like this video and you wanna see more like this, just click like and subscribe so that you can be notified when I publish more videos like this. Before we get into it, who am I to even be talking about personal trainers for strength training? Well, my name is Igor. I am a personal trainer for strength training. Um, I have a bachelor's degree with a specialty in biomechanics and the degree is in kinesiology and health science. I am the author of several books on exercise and nutrition, including three Amazon bestsellers, one of my most popular books is called Stop Exercising the Way You Are Doing It Now. And of course, I am the CEO of an online personal training company called Fitness Solutions Plus, and we specialize in strength training. Plus myself, I've been a personal trainer since 2006. Um, my team and I have many success stories to our, to, to our name, including here's one, how an 83-year-old grandpa gained six pounds of muscle and tripled his strength in three months. Here's another one, how Valerie stopped using her cane and pain meds and got her life back in three months. How Andrew lost 13 pounds and got rid of lower back pain in three months. And how Naomi, who's a high school teacher, lost 16 pounds, four dress sizes, and doubled her strength. These are all examples of the many success stories that, uh, that I have on my blog, uh, which will be linked in the description below. Now, let's talk about the many benefits of strength training. I'm just going to list a few. One is that improves physical and mental health. I know because I wrote a book called The Mental Health Prescription. One other thing that it does is that it increases muscular strength and improves your physique. Many people do strength training for the purpose of getting more toned, gaining muscle, and losing body fat. And a third common benefit of strength training is that it improves various markers of health. Improves bone strength. Uh, it, it, can, it can help with reversing osteoporosis, as I write about in my book, Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets. It can reduce your blood pressure. It can improve your blood glucose and many other reasons to do strength training for other health conditions. Now, you know these benefits, you want those benefits, but there are some problems associated with strength training on your own. One problem is the lack of personalization. In other words, you could watch a video, you could uh, you could read a book, etc., but none of that advice is personalized to you. You have your own unique goals. You have your own unique injuries, medications, medical conditions, and other factors that need to be factored in. And generic uh, videos, generic books are not personalized to you because they can't be. And of course, the other problem is that there's no accountability. Maybe you've tried starting to exercise in the past only to quit. Um, after a week or two, you start to find excuses not to exercise. And so another very common reason for uh, personal training, for strength training with a personal trainer, is simply that there is a person who is not you, who's waiting for you, who's expecting you at the gym at a certain predetermined time. Now, not every personal trainer is good. In fact, having done over 400 interviews over my 13 years in business, I can tell you that about 80% of trainers are not good. So how do you select a good personal trainer? Well, you want a personal trainer who avoids these six common mistakes that they make when it comes to strength training. In no particular order, mistake number one is not doing an assessment. If you just walk into a gym or you call a personal trainer and you say, I want to start exercising and they say, great, let's get to work without asking any further questions, without doing any kind of assessment. That's a bad trainer. Run like the wind. Um, and so a personal trainer should ask you a lot of questions to be able to personalize their exercise program for you. So they should ask you about any injuries. They want to, They should want to know uh, if you have any issues with your knees, your back, your shoulders, ankles, or any other joints. They should ask you if you have any health conditions because training somebody with you know high blood pressure or diabetes or arthritis is different than training somebody without those uh, conditions. And of course, probably the most important one is what are your goals? Because to train somebody whose goal is to put on muscle is different than for somebody who wants to lose body fat, which is still different than one for somebody who wants to get rid of lower back pain or improve athletic performance and so on. And the second most common mistake is not having a program. And the reason this mistake happens is it stems from the first problem uh, or the first mistake of not doing an assessment. Of course, if you're not assessing, you're not going to have a program. 
uh, a personal trainer ideally should create a personalized program based on the information that they gathered from you during your initial assessment. They should follow and help you implement that program and not just go to what is free in the gym. A lot of personal trainers aren't really personal trainers. They're just glorified babysitters. Uh, you want a real personal trainer. The personal trainers or glorified babysitters will do basically what you would have done on your own. They'll look around the gym, see what's free, and put you down on that machine or that exercise without having a pre-written program in place. Having a program pre-written shows you that they've actually thought about the different variables that make up a program, which is which exercises, in what order, how much weight, how many sets, how many repetitions. Whereas if they just take you from station to station without any thought beforehand, uh, you know they're just flying by the seat of their pants. And of course, the personal trainer should help keep you consistent. Another mistake is not tracking progress. You came to the personal trainer because you have a specific goal and you want to know if you're getting closer to that goal. So if your uh, goal is related to body fat or improved muscle, you want your trainer to measure, are you losing fat and or are you gaining muscle? Because if you're not assessing, you are guessing. You're just spending energy without necessarily making progress. Um, effort should be related to results. And if there is no relationship between effort and results, well, that's discouraging and potentially a waste of time and money. The personal trainer should also track your repetitions, sets, and weights to see if their protocol is bringing you closer towards your goals. And of course, there should be an overall analysis, again, connecting effort to results, program to progress. Another common mistake is ignoring any health uh, conditions or injuries. In other words, not everybody is in perfect health. Some people might have different conditions. Um, they might have diabetes or high blood pressure or arthritis or osteoporosis or other conditions that may affect the way that a, a trainer sh trains you or the, the way that they program for you. And so the reason that trainers do this often is because, well, the, train is, uh, the training of trainers is often inadequate. The education of trainers is often inadequate. So if they don't know a condition, they just ignore the condition, which could be very, very dangerous to tell a person, a, a person with high blood pressure or on high blood pressure medications to do certain exercises could literally kill them. Um, and it's very, very important for a personal trainer to know what to do and just as important to what to avoid doing. Another common mistake is prejudging you based on your age. If your personal trainer is uh, young or very young and you are, let's say, 50 plus, maybe 60 plus or 70 plus, et cetera, then they might prejudge you based on your age. Either they'll do stuff that is too easy for you, or they'll just basically entertain you without actually training you. And so not everybody who's older is weaker. There are some weak 70-year-olds, and there are some strong 70-year-olds. There are some weak 25-year-olds, and there are some strong 25-year-olds. And so they shouldn't uh, prejudge you based on your age. Your program should be based on your ability, not on your age. Um, again, there is there's a whole a whole variation in terms of somebody's strength and fitness levels that have nothing to do with their with their age. And mistake number six is pushing clients too hard. Unfortunately, too many trainers pride themselves on how difficult a workout is. But here's the thing. Difficulty should not be the goal of the workout. If it happens, it should be a side effect. The goal of the workout should be progress. After all, what's the point of difficulty without progress? Difficulty for the sake of difficulty doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Difficulty for the sake of progress makes sense. So what we're after really is progress and difficulty is just a way to get there, potentially. Maybe it, not, it may not be difficult, but the idea is that you shouldn't chase difficulty for the sake of difficulty. Now, a program, an exercise program, should be difficult enough to cross the threshold of what it takes to make progress. So it shouldn't be super easy, but, it should not be too intense that you start to risk burnout and injuries. So again, a program should not be difficult or easy. A program should be challenging. It has to be challenging for you at your current state of fitness. What may be challenging for you after six months may be way too advanced for you when you're just starting out. And so you want a trainer who understands what's the right intensity, what's the right level of effort that you need to be putting into your workouts based on your starting point. Okay, and now what are the top three mistakes that consumers make when choosing a personal trainer? Well, one common mistake is looking for the cheapest trainer. Unfortunately, trainers come in really two categories. There's, there are cheap trainers and there are good trainers. And unfortunately, you don't really have both. Cheap trainers aren't really very good. And good trainers 
aren't very cheap. Now, it also depends on what you're looking for. It's perfectly fine to have a cheap trainer if your only goal is accountability. You don't care too much about the results. You just want to show up at the gym and exercise. You don't want to lose body fat. You don't want to gain muscle. You don't want to um, get rid of pain anywhere. You don't want to improve athletic performance. You just want somebody to wait for you at the gym. You just want accountability. Um, and if that's your only goal, that's probably fine and a cheap trainer will do. Now, if you have a more um, more direct goal, like fat loss, like muscle gain, like pain relief, like athletic performance enhancement, et cetera, then you want somebody who's priced a little bit higher, but they're also getting you better results. Another common mistake that consumers make is confusing likability with competence. Lots of trainers are enthusiastic, upbeat, charismatic people, but it doesn't mean that they're good at what they do. Just because they're confident doesn't mean they're competent. So how can you assess competence? By simply asking them for testimonials. Do they have case studies of clients who are just like you, same age, same goals, same et cetera, um, who have achieved the goals that you would like to achieve? Because again, just because they are confident doesn't mean they're competent. You wanna assess competence by results of, of similar clients. Um, and these are the top three mistakes that consumers make when it comes to hiring a personal trainer. Now, I run a personal training company, both online, virtually, as well as in person in the greater Toronto area. If you want to see whether our services are right for you, just visit my website at www.fitnesssolutionsplus.ca and fill out the application form in the top right corner by scheduling a consultation. Uh, this link will also be linked down below in the description.